A roar went up in the assembly around midnight last night when Speaker Vincent Prieto entered the chamber. When the budget bill passed a few minutes later, 53 to 23, there were more kudos for the speaker. This body salutes you today. Members, please rise. For weeks, the Democratic speaker had been under pressure to make a deal with the Republican governor and the Democratic Senate president, pass a bill restructuring Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, and the governor will sign our budget bill, the Senate president told Prieto. But Prieto didn't like the Horizon bill and was stubbornly refusing to consider it. When no budget was passed by June 30th at midnight, the state shut down and the finger-pointing began. Things were at a logjam for three days until Horizon CEO Bob Marino showed up at the State House and met with both legislative leaders. I think you all realize that Horizon didn't ask to be in the middle of this situation, but I do appreciate the opportunity to have met with them and express my concerns. Seven hours later, at 10 o'clock last night, Senate President Sweeney and the Speaker held a joint news conference to announce the deal. None of this was easy. But the speaker says he's always willing to compromise, and it, that is a true statement. And again, I want to thank you. Thank you. And I think this is a good day because everything will be open probably starting tomorrow. I think the governor said he's putting out a release that the beaches will be open tomorrow and parks. So, speaker, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator President. And I appreciate, and, um, you know, we were in a crisis. And uh, again, uh, for me, it was about getting this budget passed and I still stand behind it. It was a, a good budget. Prieto had not wanted to rush a Horizon bill and now had to explain his change of heart on that. The one thing that I had said, I did not want to see a bill move before it was properly vetted. The difference, since we were in a crisis, we brought in the key stakeholder, as I said, the entity that's going to be affected by this, had them be part of this discussion and I talked to a lot of other key stakeholders. With Horizon solved, all parties would agree to 73 additional items in the budget that Democrats put in there. By us accomplishing this, and we're going to stay here tonight, uh, whatever, 12, 1 in the morning, whatever it is, uh, everyone will be able to enjoy their 4th of July plans as, as is. I'm sorry for the inconvenience you know, uh, that everyone went through. But at the end of the day, we have one hell of a budget that we can be proud of. The lesson in this episode, Sweeney said, is always talk. I knew we could get to a conclusion if we could get in a room. I had reached out to Bob Marino on Tuesday and asked him to give me a call, and I couldn't get him to give me a call. And it was frustrating because you could see things coming. And for the first time since I've been Senate president, I knew we were in, we were in trouble because when people don't talk, things don't get done. Next, it was Christie's turn. At 11 last night, he came out to confirm that he was signing off on everything. Finally tonight, I'm very pleased that both the Speaker and the Senate President have reached an agreement which will result in the legislature fulfilling their obligation to deliver a budget to the governor. I'm sad that it's three days late, but I'll sign the budget tonight. He had gotten a Horizon bill. Well, not all that I sought when I laid out my, cons my concerns in my February budget speech are there. That's the nature of compromise. And he gloated at having forced the assembly speaker to blink. For the last two weeks, I was told that no bill on horizon would be passed now, that reform had to wait. That was unacceptable to me. And despite the doubts of some folks, tonight we've achieved the results I asked for in February. But Christie had wanted millions of dollars from Horizon's reserve funds for the state, and he didn't get that. We have finally capped the excess profits of Horizon, and we're ensuring now that the Horizon excess profits are returned directly to the policyholders. Nonetheless, he claimed victory. Those who said as late as Friday that they would not even discuss a Horizon bill have now been proven wrong. After Christie spoke, the assembly went to work, passing the budget bill and then the Horizon bill. Lawmakers frustrated during the shutdown savored the moment. It was definitely worth the wait and it was worth the fight. Um, you know, I think a lot of people sitting here uh, thought that the governor wouldn't live up to his word and would cut the programs. Um, it's why it was, it's always beneficial to come to the table, work together, work across the line. I'm just happy. There's no reason to shut down government over a bill or over an issue. There's always middle ground. And I do have to thank the speaker now because 
he at some point decided to see middle ground, and that wasn't easy for him, but he did it. Over in the Senate, they reversed the order, passing the Horizon Bill first, 33 to 1, and then the budget on a party line vote of 21 to 14. It's been a long day, um, it's been a long weekend. Uh, it's a shame it ever came to this, it didn't have to come to this. Um, I think it's probably the best budget that uh, I've chairman that I've seen in the last eight years. Uh, there's a lot of priorities in this budget and I'm glad the Senate stuck together. I think the legislature should have come to a solution long before now. And it's a shame that the people in New Jersey were impacted by this. It should have never happened. I mean, the people have a right to be angry. You know, I would be angry as well. I mean, we have a responsibility to get the budget on time. Uh, nevertheless, it's better to get it done now than not. So we're going to move forward and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen ever again. It was an epic fight, this budget battle of 2017. Students of New Jersey politics will be replaying it and discussing it for years to come. At the State House, I'm Michael Aaron, NJTV News.